Okay, welcome to my talk about Eclipse. My name is Rich Schumel. My company is Sage Tree Solutions. I'm down from San Diego. Any other San Diego people here? All right. Woohoo. Um, and one of the things that we do is a lot of Drupal development. And this is my talk on Eclipse. Okay, um, if there's one thing that I want you guys to take away from this talk, whether or not you decide to uh, switch over to Eclipse or not, is uh, become an expert with your tools. All right, this is a picture of Handy Manny. For those of you that have children, maybe you're familiar with them. Um, in each episode, Handy Manny, he's invariably presented with a problem that he solves invariably with the help of his handy dandy tools. And so um, I just really encourage all of you to, um, to become an expert of your tools, become really proficient, because you become a lot better and more effective developer. And hopefully, like Handy Manny, uh, whenever you're presented with a problem uh, that your client has, you'll invariably solve it for them. Solve it for them. Ah, become an expert with your tools. I love Kina. Okay, uh, these are my, this is my old tool set, what I used to use before switching over to a, an IDE. I used to have Vim. Um, I loved it because, you know, I didn't have to move my hands around much to move the mouse to manipulate the text, and I got pretty good with the regular expressions. Of course, Firefox to see what Apache did with the PHP I wrote. And then I'd always have the PHP manual open to look up references. And also, when I started doing Drupal dev, I'd be contributing to their bandwidth bill, the, the Drupal, Drupal folks. So um, just out of curiosity, um, does, it, does this look familiar to some of you? Yeah? OK. Um, is anybody else using, like, say, like Dreamweaver? No? I see a lot, I, I've seen some developers using TextMate or yeah, TextMate or Text uh, Wrangler. No? OK, but it seems like a lot of people, Vim users? Yeah? All right, cool. It's my people. Emacs. How about Emacs? No? OK. Um, no, that's cool. Whatever, you know. If you're one of those type of people, that's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so, you know, I was pretty happy with this. I knew all the shortcut keys, you know, Control R, Control Shift R to re reload everything um, from the server. And I could Alt Tab pretty fast between everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I was a pretty happy camper developer, um, but that, you know, my, my idea of, you know, what was possible kind of changed when uh, one of my friends uh, showed me how he was using Eclipse uh, for his Java development. Um, and he was, I was already, I did some, I started with PHP back in the 3.0 3 days, then I got into Java. That's where I first got exposed to Eclipse, and then I got back into PHP uh, when I uh, started Sage Tree Solutions. And so I knew Eclipse was out there, but when my friend, his name's Llewellyn, um, showed me how he was using it, he was just using it on a fundamentally different level than I had been. And it was just really cool, um, all the, all the kind of neat stuff, neat things that he could do. So let's see. Getting Eclipse, it's pretty straightforward. Just go to. Whoops. Eclipse.org. There we go. Click on the nice yellow button. Nice yellow button. There we go. And there we go. And then just click on the download the Eclipse for PHP developers. It. Oh. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so four minutes, twenty-six seconds so far. So um, uh, yeah, so it's really cool right now. They have just a full stack, and well, not full stack, but just a installer for PHP developers. Because before, what you used to have to do was download Eclipse and then install manual install all the PDT and all those other libraries, which honestly was a pain in the butt. And I, getting it working when I first got into it. Uh, was a, it was a pain in the butt because there was a lot of weird version dependencies. But now, all you have to do is just download this package and install it. 
So <clears throat> when you first start up Eclipse, it's going to present you with the welcome page, which uh, you're not going to see here because I didn't just start using it. But um, the first thing that you can do once you get past the welcome page is you're going to want to set up your project. And that's what I'm going to go through right now. Let's see. Oops. And that's pretty simple. You just go new, PHP project. Then I'm going to give the name Eclipse demo. Actually, uh, before, I, before I get into this, um, I set up a Drupal installation on my local host, which, oops, Eclipse demo. Oops. It's pretty standard, nothing really special. I have admin menu in there. And then if you look over here, that should look pretty, pretty familiar to, to all of you. <coughs> and um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to import this project, this Drupal site, into Eclipse and set it up as a project. And so I just give it the name. And by default, Eclipse wants to create the project in your workspace. But since I already have it set up, I'm going to create it from an existing source. And then I'm just going to go to, oops, to my uh, Drupal root folder and choose that. So that's the folder where uh, this Drupal installation is located at. Then everything is fine. I'm going to leave the JavaScript support on because, you know, you always use JavaScript too with uh, Drupal installations. And then, uh oh, what happened? Oh, it detected my previous. But usually at this point, you just click finish. And what it's going to do is it's going to see in the bottom right hand corner. Well, you don't see it anymore. But if you were quick, you'd see it saying building workspace. And that's going through your, uh, your project files, all those files. And it's parsing them and indexing them and learning about where all the functions are and what their method signatures are at. And um, so, so now it has all that stuff in memory as part of the project. All right. Oops. OK. And so when you're a PHP developer and using Eclipse, um, this is the PHP view, uh, or actually perspective. It's the perspective. There's two things. Um, there's a lot of different perspectives into your workspace. This is the PHP perspective. You can see there's a PHP. This is the PHP one. And there's also PHP debug, if you want to take a look at that. Now I'm, I'm going to show this in a little bit. Um, and there's also some other ones. You can see all the, the Java. Uh, there's a database one. If you want to, what, one, one thing that's kind of neat um, is they have a, uh, I think, I forget where it's at. They have a database view. So if you want to stop using PHP MyAdmin, um, you could set this up to you know, query your database and run queries and whatnot and give you an SQL command line. So it's a nice integrated tool. But the ones that we're mainly interested in is just this PHP one for development. Okay. Okay, so let me shut down all the other projects or close projects. Okay. So uh, this is the PHP view. And let's open this up. And it's not nothing terribly exciting. You got the file. It's essentially a file explorer over here on the PHP explorer. And then over here, this, this main panel is the editing panel, editor. And let's see. So this is the editor. So it's nice. You can turn on the uh, line numbers. You got the syntax highlighting, which is all fine and dandy. Whoops. No. And then over here, oh, I guess there's nothing really in the outline on the index.php file. Uh, let's go to the node module. Um, over here. So I opened up the node.module file. 
on the outline, it gives you all the function calls and all the defined constants in the file that you're editing. So you can quickly navigate to whichever function that you want. You can just look it up over here you know, if you want to look up something. And then on the bottom, uh, let's see. On the bottom, it also has this bunch of auxiliary views, which uh, the, the main one, I don't really use this too much unless I'm doing like console. Uh, if I'm doing like testing and I need to print, if I have a, a PHP uh, script, print something out to console, I can look at that. Oh, but then I'll also show you the, the tail view also in a little bit. One of the neat things that Eclipse does is that it, when it parses its code, it looks for all the to-dos and it, you can use it also to manage your task list. Like, uh, where's one, look, somebody in profile, Somebody needs to add access control to hidden fields. That's in the profile views. So that's one of the neat things about, about Eclipse. Is that yeah, if you, oh, let, me, let me show you. Uh, yeah, access, add access control to hidden view fields. That's in the profile views.inc file. So if you double click on that, it'll jump into that. And then you'll see that somebody left a note for themselves here um, to, you know, add this capability. Um, so it's a nice little feature that you, you can use to, to manage your to-do list, right? So the first thing, does, is everybody following so far? Pretty straightforward? Yeah? Okay, cool. So the first thing that is nice about Eclipse is just the editor. Like I mentioned, there's the, uh, the line numbers and the syntax coloring. Um, or syntax highlighting. One of the cool things that it does is that say, I'm trying to find, let's go to the node. One of the nice things that it does is that if you put the mouse on a variable, or I mean put the cursor on a variable, you notice how path is highlighted throughout the function. So you could see where that, that variable is referenced throughout the rest of that, that function. Like, for example, uh, where's another one? Result, node title list result. And you can see it's used, let's see, one time in this function. So it kind of gives you, helps give you these visual cues as to what's happening in your code. And the other thing that's really nice about it is uh, it also has a parser. So if you're doing PHP, if you're, you know, uh, creating your code, and let's say uh, foo equals array foo bar. So you'll notice immediately there's, see that little marker? It, Eclipse is telling me that I already have a syntax error in my file. And so I don't even have to go run it in Firefox yet to find out that I have a syntax error. And it'll show you, it shows you over here on the left side, and if you mouse over it, it tells you, gives you a somewhat cryptic message as, you know, what it thinks is going wrong. And also if you have a lot of them in a particular file, um, it, it shows you on the right side, and when you click on them, it'll jump to, like, say you're, oh, it's not very, hmm. but if this was a really long file, you could click on this little uh, red marker and it would jump to where the error was so you could, you know, quickly navigate to where the syntax error was. So I'm going to add that comment and then it goes away. So, you know, no more syntax errors. Um, error detection, okay. The other cool thing with Eclipse is the code navigation. Like say, um, I'm making a module called uh, Eclipse Demo. And so I'm pressing Apple, what is it, or Command Shift R to open resource. And um, I just start typing, oops, 
Eclipse demo, and then it, then it searches through all the files in my workspace, and then it gives me which ones that I might be referencing, so I could quickly access whichever one, whichever file I want to edit. So I can jump to the files I need to edit instead of having to go back into the shell, and then I'd have to, you know, have some really gnarly paths to get to get to the file I wanted to edit, or do do a lot of CDs. Um, so that's open open resources. That's if I go too fast, I, I use a lot of uh, keyboard shortcuts. Be a, I'm a big proponent of keyboard shortcuts. Um, stop me, let me know, and, and ask. So that's Control Shift R. Uh, if, let's see, navigation. I already talked about the outline. There's the quick outline. Like, say, uh, let's go back to the node because that's a really big node.module. There's the quick outline. If you need to jump to a function, this is apple or command O, and then you can just start typing like node, say I wanted to go to node save. It helps me navigate to that, that function really fast. Right. What's the, what's the long way to that? The long way to Oh, the shortcut was uh, Command O or Control O for the Windows users. That's for the quick outline. The long way for oh to get to get to this. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, if one one really super helpful uh, shortcut key is uh, Command or Control Shift L which brings up a cheat sheet of all the uh, shortcut keys that are in there. So I'm always hitting that, and I'm just trying to learn one new shortcut key, like a, a day, which helps me you know, work, work faster. So it's really, really, you know, has all these little shortcut keys to help you work faster instead of having to look up stuff in the, uh, in the file, file menu or do a, a right click and, and find out all, all that stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, it also, you know, if you don't need to jump to a line, that's Command or Control L. Let's go to line four. That's always helpful. I use that a lot when I'm actually uh, doing CSS. Like I'll, uh, in Firefox, like say I wanted to theme this H, H2, and I'll find out that it's in style.css on line 44. I'll open the style.css. So I have a couple projects open right now. So there's the burger one, then I have the Eclipse demo, and I think, I'm, what am I using? I'm using the, the Garland theme. So I know to pick, pick that one. That's the one I want. Oops. And go to line 44. And I know this is the exact CSS rule that I need to update to tweak uh, to tweak this style right here. So I could do let's say color theme. Of course, Control S or Command S, save. I want to reload it. Now it's green. See. Um, let's see. That's outline. Just real quick, also, uh, one of the nice things too is it has shortcut keys. If you wanted to say, like, you wanted to duplicate that, that's uh, Apple option down. So that's copy down. Or if I wanted to copy it up, to do that too. It just, it just copies the, it's like Control C, move the cursor up, Control V. And uh, if you're doing, you know, a lot of like CSS styles, or if you're doing functions that look similar and you're just changing one or two things about it, that's really helpful too. Yeah. Highlight it, and then I can copy it down. Um, if you wanted to move lines, that's just uh, command. Say I wanted to put this. 
uh, green style. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, with in a different is a uh, it's Alt Option or I think that's I forget what that is for for Windows users, but it's the Option button for Macs. Um, if you want to move lines up or down, that's just Alt Option and then the arrow key up or down, which is really handy too. Sometimes you define a variable uh, too late in the scope or something, and it's just a really quick you know one key operation to move it up or down. Well. Now it's found. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Uh, get rid of that. Oh, if you want to delete a line, that is uh, Command D. It's pretty simple. Um, so that's that's kind of handy and dandy. But so it once you learn all these shortcut keys, you can really navigate and manipulate manipulate your code really fast, which is really 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 powerful, right? Um, but I think the, the more powerful thing is the content, the code assist or the, the context assistance. Um, let's go back to this Eclipse module. <coughs> so uh, there's there's two things. There's there's the auto completion. If I'm a really lazy typer, and and I am. Uh, if I didn't want to type that all, I could just I just pressed Command Space, and it'll give me a, a select list of things that it thinks that I want to type in. So I wanted to type in function, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement this Eclipse demo page callback function Eclipse demo. Unfortunately, it doesn't introspect enough to realize that. I want to create that um, that particular function, Eclipse demo page, and return foo. So if I go over here, flush the caches, just so the uh, everything gets reset. Demo. So now I have have my page. Callback implemented. Now, well, where I was going with this is, I think most of my time uh, was. Uh, let me wait. Want to say? If you check out like those uh, productivity books, a, a really common recurring theme is to to remove distractions. Right? Turn off your phone. If you really want to get into the zone, turn off your phone, turn off your IM client, don't Twitter and all that stuff, turn off email, so you can really focus. And I think that's one of the things that, that you know, taking it, that idea into coding is where Eclipse really shines, right? Because when I was in my old setup, I was always switching contexts, going to the PHP manuals or the Drupal, Drupal API, um, you know, help pages. And uh, you know, I could alt tab like nobody's business, right? Um, but it, you are switching context, and it is a little bit. Yeah, you know, it it does take you uh, those couple seconds to you know get back into your flow, right? When you get back into your coding. One of the really cool things uh, is, aside from the autocomplete, is the. Uh, Code is it? Is it? I forget the exact name, but just check it out. Um, let's say I wanted to display all all the titles from. Let's see, uh, 2009. News from from the news feed. Here, right. Now I remember. I remember that there was, I could get this content, something with one of those file functions, but I don't remember exactly which function I should call, right? If I just start typing and then I press the Apple, uh, Apple space, it's going to give me a list of all the candidate functions that it thinks that I might need. And if you'll notice over here, it also has 
the description of the file. So I don't have to go to the PHP manual anymore. I can see like, uh, I think it was file, keep on going down, file get contents, right? So it tells me what it does, the description, the parameters. I don't have to go to the documentation anymore, to uh, php.net anymore, to check out the documents. Yeah? My command space pulls up a spotlight for searching something else. A spot, oh, you might have to, if that happens, he said that uh, he's getting spotlight instead of the uh, autocomplete or the con context assist. Um, in that case, I think you might have to go to the system preferences and then keyboard shortcuts and then disable s that particular shortcut for when you're working Eclipse. Alternatively, you can set it to control space. Oh, yeah, that's another option too, exactly. So maybe, it's, maybe it's already on control space instead? Oh, is that? No, turn, make spotlight control space instead of Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's another option too. And if you want to, if you want to tweet, you can customize your keyboard shortcuts, of course. Um, yeah. So, uh, what is that? The shortcut key is, I think it's, what is it? Shift, Command L, and then Shift, Command L again. We'll get you to your preferences. And it's under general, and then keys. And then it has a whole dictionary of everything that you can create a shortcut key for or overwrite. <coughs> yeah, so, you know, if you want to, there's still, a lot of the Java um, shortcuts are still in here, which don't, you know, doesn't work in the PHP editor, but for the most part, I think it gives me like, you know, 75 or 80 percent of the, the capabilities that I need, so it's, it's pretty cool. So, um, what was I? Okay, so yeah, re so remember I on file, get contents, it's gonna tell me the, the method or the function signature so I don't have to go back to the documents to refer that, to, to look that up, get contents, and then feed, is that it? I think that's it. Oh, we have to give it some, uh, let's see, uh, News. Return. So this is gonna. It's not gonna do that much. Oh, one of the other things though, also, is if you have a long. This is a really short one, but if you have a long uh, function, the command uh, completion. Oops. Also works for for the functions. Like say, let's see. Uh, this isn't a very good example, but. Uh, now let's let's go back to the node. node module. Like for example, what's a like say say items, right? If I wanted to, uh, let's, that's not a good example either. Well, once the method or the function builds up a little bit, you know, uh, that'll be a better example. News return news. Okay, so let's see what what this ha this is going to output a bunch of yeah pretty much what I expected. Um, I got a whole, whole bunch of XML that doesn't really display really nicely, but you know I'm getting something right. Um, Show you the inline documentation, and then let's see. Let's parse it. I'm going to use the simple XML. Was that it? Is it simple XML or simple XML only? Let's try this. News. And then I want to do a So you notice that it also, when I'm using the functions, it also, t you know, has all these little tooltip pop-ups that tell me, that help remind me what the um, what the method sign signature is. 
Okay, cool. So <clears throat> I have my simple um, simple XML element, and if you look at the code, you can see that you know it got parsed, and I'm getting getting some kind of object in there. Now, let's say I, I didn't want to print it, and I wanted to use the debugger. Are people using debuggers here? Nobody? One kind of? <laughs> wow. No, has, has, anybody ever, has ever, anybody ever used a debugger? Yeah. OK, OK. But you don't use it, though? How, how come you don't use it? Is it just hard to set up, or? Yeah, OK. True, it, it is hard to set up. I had to, <laughs> I had to spend a little, little bit of time downloading the right module um, for PHP. But once you get it set up, it's, it's pretty darn cool. Um, so the way you do that, that's going to be the, the quick. Um, let's see. Uh, oops, no. I think that's, is that it? Okay. Yeah, essentially, all right, hold on. Okay. We want to look at php, 5php-debug.ini. So I have a php.ini for debug and one for just regular running my PHP scripts. Um, the reason being, I don't normally always use uh, the debugger because when it's on, Apache and the PHP scripts run slow, right? So I only turn it on when I want to step through something and uh, figure out exactly what's going on. So essentially, if you, if you Google, there's all kinds of stuff on the Internet that will uh, tell you how to get and download this. Um, just Google it. But I'm using the Zen debugger, and essentially, um, it's these last couple lines right here that tell PHP to load the um, to load the what is it? Load the debugger, and then there's another line that tells it to allow um, my local host to to connect to it. And then the last one is expose the debugger to, to this external process. So PHP is going to run, and it's going to open up a port, uh, which is going to allow uh, Eclipse to connect to it and step through the functions. Okay? So I have a little script, debug, which copies the debug php.ini to the PHP, the active php.ini, and then it restarts Apache. And so, like, uh, let's say I wanted to ex inspect this. I'm going to set my breakpoint here. And then I'm going to be, when, uh, when you debug on the server, you're going to set this up as debug as a PHP web page. Right? I'm going to show you my configuration. Um, so I have one set up. Excuse me. And here I, I tell it, I just give it a name. I tell it I'm going to use the Zen debugger. If you want, you could also use the X debugger, but the Zen debugger is the one that I got working first, so that's the one that I went with. Um, and then you specify the PHP server, and then uh, if you look at it, uh, I just give it to the the path, the the URL with which to access it. And then the file. Um, this one's not terribly important. I always just uh, pick index.php. I'm not really going to debug that file, but you need to give it a file so it'll run. Uh, index.php. And then if you wanted to, you could set up to break at the first line. I'll, I'll set that up. And then if you let it auto-generate <clears throat> the URL, it's going to generate something really weird. You can see it thinks it uh, prepends the project 
name in front of the URL, but we don't want that. We want to debug that uh, that path uh, that we have for our, our little demo module, right? So I'm going to set it up to demo. That's fine. And then debug, right? Please work. Cool. Okay. So uh, when you debug in PHP, it usually it automatically switches to the debug view. And so real quick, here is the stack trace. Right here, you got your breakpoints. You got your variables, so you could inspect all the variables that are available in this particular scope. And you can also walk through it. You could use it, you know, walk through the, the code using the controls up here. Let's see, there's step, step, which will actually run each line line by line, and then you could inspect the, the variables. Um, I'm not particularly interested in this part, so I'm just going to go ahead and let it go, which is a F8. But then once it keeps on running and running, then it eventually gets to my Eclipse demo page, right? And so here, it's kind of cool. It stops here, and then I can inspect the variables. Let's see. There's nothing assigned to news yet. Let's step over one. So now you can inspect it over here. And this is, is super helpful if you're, I don't know, if you have some, a gnarly piece of logic, sometimes all the, you know, print lines and echoes doesn't really help that much, but this can be really powerful, a powerful tool if you could just step through it and see exactly where your co code is going, right? So let's say I wanted to loop on these, uh, on the, the nodes in this XML. I'm going to step one more. Oh, if you leave it, the mouse on top of it, it'll also dump the, the value of that variable. So at this point, this XML has been parsed, and I could inspect it over here. And so I could see it has a couple of attributes, the version, and then this XML element, it's, you know, just a object res representat object representation of the um, XML that we got from the feed URL. So there's a channel, and then it looks like the news items are in in this item element. So just remember XML, channel, item. Okay. So I'm just going to let it run. F8. Is it still going? Is it done? I think it's done. Yeah, it's done. So I'm going to flip back to my, uh, right now I'm debug view, which you can still use to uh, edit your code. This is still, you know, the editor. Uh, is that still going? Huh. That's interesting. Um, okay, now, now it's done. If you want to switch back to the PHP editing mo mode, that's Apple or uh, Command F8. That'll toggle between the different perspectives. Go back to PHP. And then, uh, what is it? I think it's Apple F6. If you want to go through the different open files that you have. And then I'm going to loop through this XML for each, whoops, XML, it was a channel, and then, shucks, what was it, item, as story, and then I'm just going to say, let's see, let's, out equals, make a string, um, equals, let's make it a, a list, uh, all right. oh, one of the other nice things, if you start, start a string, it's going to put that uh, closing quote at the end, which is kind of nice. Oh, yeah, otherwise it's going to be, thanks. And 
and then uh, I'm going to cast it to a string story title. And then let's just return out. Okay. So let's check it out. Whoops. Oh, it's still debugging. So I'll just let this go. So if I wanted to, I could step step through this. I'm going to go through this for each, and then I could see if I got the, the right item. So let's look at story. So it looks like I did get it. Let's let it go. Then over here I have a you know a list of the, the recent stories from the uh, news feed from our Drupal Camp site. Um, let's see. Other cool features, I'm getting close, uh, that I wanted to show you is it also has uh, a lot of plugins. I mentioned like that if you wanted to, I don't have it set up here. If you wanted to use the database explorer module instead of like PHP admin, you could you know run SQL queries and insert data and all that stuff with that. Um, the one that, the two crucial ones that I use pretty religiously is the subclips. Um, plugin, which is essentially integrates with Subversion. So you can do your check-ins, check-outs, branch in here. So team has, you know, you could commit it, update, create a patch, branch it. It's really powerful. It also has the, oops, no. If you wanted to browse. Actually, I don't know if I could get to this. I think it's a different port. Yeah, I can't get to this, so this part of the demo is going to suck. But I could browse my uh, my subversion repository and actually manipulate it from here if I wanted to. If I wanted to branch something, I could do it from here. Let's go back to PHP. And also, the really cool thing is on top of you know you can diff it, like say that's not. Let's say, I don't know. I'll just put a bunch of inserts or new lines. But you can com compare it with whatever's the latest in the repository. Or it also has a local history, which is really cool. So if you don't check anything in, you can still compare it against what you did like three minutes ago. So that's a really powerful tool. You know, If you, you go off and try something and that just totally didn't work, you could. it's really easy to revert to whatever version you had three minutes ago using Eclipse's internal revision management. So that's one, uh, subclips. And also, uh, with the file explorer, it'll also tell you if there's something that's not in sync with the repository. You see that little star icon right there? And uh, entail. Do I have that? A lot of times, the, there's a lot of helpful debug information in the PHP error logs. And so, um, show view. View, yes. So you could use ent which is just really a, P uh, a tail login. So I'm just, right now, I'm just tailing my, uh, uh, my PHP error log. Which, so when I run it, you know, I'll have a nice, I don't have to switch back to the console or whatever, and then, you know, go and f figure out how to CD to the error log and then tail that. So it's all right here in front of me, which helps keep me in the zone instead of having to switch context through all these different tools. I'm just, you know, kind of in this control dashboard, and it helps me keep me in the zone and uh, work faster. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Did anybody have uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's one thing that plagues me too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't figured that out. I know, like, if uh, yeah, let me. 
show Handy Manny. Um, yeah, that's one of the things that I noticed like when I'm pairing with my friend that's working in, in Java, they, it seems to just close stuff automatically, but I haven't found the equivalent yet. So, but if you do, please let me know, because okay. I'd love that too. Oh, Entail is a third party. Uh, is it a plugin? Yeah, it's a plugin. I think I, I think I, in my handout, I think I might have posted the URL. You have to check. Um, yeah, details for the Entail. You have to download it, and it's not like one of those easy installers where you just give it the URL and then it automatically installs. You have to actually download it, unzip it, and then copy the jar into your plugins directory. But once it's there, then you can also set it up to color code certain errors. So if you want to filter on, a, on them, you can do that too. So cool. So yeah, I just encourage everybody to just become an expert with your tools. And thanks for coming. <laughs>